What's going on guys? This is Bryce Lewis. Uh, so, I just competed in my meet yesterday. Uh, I'm going to get some footage up for that and some commentary on that, but overall, great experience. Uh, I put about 50 pounds on my total for my last competition at Raw Nationals, and um, just went 8 for 9. I just missed my last deadlift by a little bit, lost my balance, and ripped open a callus. So good stuff there. Um, what I want to do in the meantime is share something I've been working on with you guys. This will be a freebie up on the website. Um, the new place for the freebies, by the way, is if you're on the main page at thestrengthathlete.com, scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see freebies in the secondary navigation. So that's uh, in the gray box at the very bottom. Um, so what is this? This is um, essentially a template for a daily undulating periodization program, or really any program you want to, to run that is percentage-based. Um, I've included an RPE column here for mainly assistance movements and guidelines on the main stuff um, for ranges that we want to keep. But uh, I wanted something that allowed me to uh, run daily undulating periodization programs for athletes with, uh, with a tighter control on a few things and have the program scroll left to right instead of um, up to down like the tracking sheet on the other one. So um, play around with this. It's, uh, it's great. I, I love this and I'm going to go through a few things here. So first, um, since it is percentage-based program, we need either actual or estimated one rep maxes. So um, if you put in your maybe three rep max or something, maybe I can do 470 for a triple on squats. It will predict um, based off of a uh, pretty standard formula what um, my one rep max estimate is on the squat. And the same thing is true for the bench and the deadlift. Um, as far as kilos and pounds, you can change this. Um, and the only change it will really do is when it populates the loads, if it says kilos, it's going to populate the loads um, by increments of 2.5 because you can load uh, you can load one and a quarter chips on the on the bar when it comes to kilos, but not pounds. So LBS is for pounds, KGS for kilos, um, and you can see that change reflected across everything. So there's a lot hidden here, and you're going to need to know how to hide and unhide rows and columns. So um, blue here means that it's hidden. If I select both of these, right click and go down to either hide or unhide, it will do that. Okay, so let me go over a little bit of what's going on here. Um, these are percentage based, so you can put in a percentage here and it will change the load. Maybe I want this athlete doing 5x3 at uh, 75%, it will change the load as well. Um, there are slots for six, up to 6 days. If you don't want to use them, um, simply zero all of these out. Um, just delete these and delete these all the way across and then once you're done you can just hide this row and you won't ever have to see it okay um, but since it's there it's actually contributing to volume which is one of the reasons why um, there's some other stuff in here that I'll be showing you uh, unhide cool so um, let's take a look at what's hidden here we go so when I actually give this program to an athlete, or when you guys actually are ready to use it, um, we want to keep out the actual uh, sets, reps, loads. We want to hide all this volume junk, and you can do that by just clicking here, and it will just um, hide that. So I've grouped those uh, columns, and it will just hide them all together. Okay. Um, you can run the same exercise in the same slot either time, or if you want, you can just click here and change it. Um, and maybe you want pause squats on week one. Uh, front on week two, pause week three, front week four, you know, just alternating or something like that. Um, or, you know, you can just keep with the same exercises all the way across. So if I change this to front squats, it will change it for everything across that line. Um, but to the point, let's take a look at that volume stuff. Um, and this is nice. So notice that I've got a category column here at the start. There's four categories that are acceptable. Squat, bench, deadlift, and ACC for accessory. Um, Make sure you put it in exactly that way. Upper or lower case doesn't matter. But let's say that I actually wanted uh, the first exercise of the day here to be some deadlifting. So as, as soon as I put in deadlift here, it's going to take those volume calculations and move them over into a deadlift column. Now that's important because we've got some tallies down at the bottom for how much of your uh, sets for the week and how much of your total volume for the week is coming from deadlifting, squatting, and benching, which you can find here. Okay. Um, so there's a little bit of background work, but what that allows us to do is see how much of our sets and reps, and NL stands for number of lifts, is coming from squat, bench, and deadlift uh, respectively. And the same case is true for volume. 
Uh, we've also got what distribution of your total volume is coming from week one, week two, week three, and week four. So you can plan out um, higher volume weeks in this fashion. Um, and sometimes you may think that you have a higher volume week, but this allows you to actually confirm that. So in this case, it's, it's a relatively even split. As we can see by NL here, we've got 23% week one, 25 week two, 26, and 26. So volume is essentially going up over the course of this program. Um, maybe that's not what we want. Maybe we want something else. Um, in, the, in the case of Shiko programs, for instance, um, some peaking programs have drastically different uh, amounts of volume. So for instance, a common one is to have week two uh, up anywhere from 35 to 40% of the total volume over the course of the four weeks. Um, but anyway, I'm just providing the uh, Excel file here for you guys to play around with. So uh, all this tally stuff will take care of uh, itself on the back end as long as you've got these categories right with what you want as far as the exercise goes. Uh, if I were to do AMRAPs on this, I would put it here in just a separate line um, and just have it click here. Um, so uh, one set of uh, four, and then if you end up achieving more than four, What's nice about this is that, let's say I did five by four on my first, so I'm putting in my actual work for that day, uh, and then my load here was 400, because um, that's what it says here, and I do my one set uh, of AMRAP, maybe I get eight reps on this. What it's gonna do is automatically adjust the uh, volume calculations based on what I actually achieved, not what I theoretically achieved. And the same case is true for, uh, for AMRAP. Maybe those four sets were a little bit tough. Maybe I dropped down to 380 uh, for my AMRAP. Great, it's gonna adjust the uh, volume calculations. So um, the last thing to mention really, uh, well, there's two last things to mention. We have average intensity calculations for all four weeks showing what the average intensity is. And we can see that uh, that roughly increases week to week as well, except for weeks two and three are just about the same. Maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want your average intensity to be around 70%. Um, I've seen some literature in Shiko um, supporting that idea um, and also some literature supporting around 80%. So, um, you know, you can use that as a guideline, but uh, if it's not quantifiable, then you have no really, no way of, of knowing. Okay, um, last thing is a chart here, graphing uh, NL and average weight uh, intensity over the course of the four weeks. Um, so NL on the left and average weight on the right. Uh, a lot of this stuff came from a combination of looking at Mike Zordos' resources uh, and also Boris Shaiko's resources and combining what I felt like were some important bits of the two of them. So uh, just as a, final, um, as a final note here, when you're actually ready to use the program, all we're going to want to do is keep out the important bits when you're actually tracking. So I'm let's undo that. So I'm unhiding this junk and collapsing the grouped stuff. Ah, there we go. So now when I'm ready, I can just track for four weeks. So what if you want to run this for more than four weeks? Um, you know, you can either copy and paste some stuff, but the easiest thing probably is to just right click this tab here. Click on move or copy uh, and just Click on create a copy here, and now you've got uh, number two that you can just run. So we've got training cycle one here, and then we've got training cycle two here, okay? Uh, if you have any questions, um, you can reach us by email at uh, strength athlete, um, sorry, at Bryce at thestrengthathlete.com, or you can go to the website and just click on contact. Hope you guys enjoy it.